Hello, Truth Sisters. It's Petra Williams here, the founder of The Red Hot Truth, and it's time for another fantastic Truth Sunday interview. This week, I bring you Amanda LeCount. Now, Amanda, I discovered on Instagram. She's a 19-year-old dancer in LA, and she popped up on my feed probably because, as you know, I post my own dance videos, and I love, love, love dancing, but admittedly, looking at me, because the body's a bit stiffer, and you know, because of a few ailments, I don't always look like I'm dancing, but I love it, it's my truth, I blossom when I dance, and I post those videos to encourage you to get out there and do what you love. And this is exactly what Amanda's doing, right? Most of the dancers in LA are slim and flexible and beautiful. And Amanda does not fit into that stereotype. She's a large girl and everyone in LA has pretty much told her to become a professional dancer, you have to lose weight. And she's gone, hey, no way. This is who I am. Just because I don't fit into the stereotype that you are meant to fit into, doesn't mean I can't follow my dream. So she's following her Red Hot Truth. She's doing it her way and she is blossoming. So I'm excited to bring you this interview. What I'd love you to listen to is listen to her mindset, listen to her philosophy and listen to her absolute dedication to her dream to dance. You know, as coaches, we have a dream to make this world a better place by helping people be the best that they can be. But are you really committed to that dream because if you are you will be like Amanda and you will smash through any objection with the support that you have and with the vision and with the drive and the collaboration so enjoy the interview I really did enjoy it too and take what you can from it and implement it into your life so that you can live your truth and blossom well Amanda welcome to the Red Hot Truth podcast so um thank this, you for having me i was um showing my husband yesterday i was like oh check this out i'm renting this really cool chick amanda and um and she goes oh we've been following matt is it stefani is that how you say his uh, name? stefanina stefanina that's right we've been following him for years and he's like Oh yeah, I totally know Amanda. Like she's been around for years, and it's amazing mm -hmm. how when you start talking to people, um, yeah, the the power of 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 like the internet is incredible. So it's like, yeah, I've been I've been seeing her for years, which is exciting, right? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, let's get started. Um, for those people who do not know who Amanda is, um, tell them who is Amanda. Yeah, um, so yes, I'm Amanda LeCount, and I am a 19-year-old professional hip-hop dancer. Um, I'm from Colorado originally, but I now live in Los Angeles, and I moved here about five years ago to pursue my dance career, and I've been able to do some pretty cool things. I've worked with artists such as Katy Perry, Megan Trainor, Rihanna. I just did a big music video for a huge female artist that I cannot say yet, but oh. it should be coming out in like a week or so. Um, and yeah, I'm all about breaking the stereotype and body positivity. And yeah, that's a little bit about me. I love that. So um, you, the entertainment industry, as far as I know, uh, what they tell me is quite a cutthroat kind of tough industry. Um, and you, at a very young age, are now have achieved a great deal, right? So tell me, how did you go from nobody in the industry to somebody? Um, yeah, everyone's journey is obviously very different. And for me, when I first moved here, I already knew it was going to be pretty hard for me to get the jobs that everyone else gets just because the dance industry is so different like stereotypical and there's definitely a look right now that you know most choreographers or casting directors want for a dancer and so I knew it was going to be really hard for me to kind of get in the flow of working a lot and getting to work with amazing artists and do all these music videos and stuff but I mean at the end of the day all you can do is be yourself and work your hardest and do your best and 
if you keep doing that, it'll one day come to you and something good will happen to you. And that's what happened to me. I just kept, you know, taking class, auditioning, kept getting told no <laughs> all the time. And then just one time, my first real job was a JCPenney commercial. And that person gave me a chance. And after that, I just was on a roll. And I haven't really stopped since then. I mean, after that, I did things with Target, American Eagle, Dove. Um, and that's just more commercial aspect. That's not even, you know, really dance jobs. That's more okay. commercial. And then my first big dance job, I want to say, I would say that it was me being in the Katy Perry music video. And I got that. This just shows that you do not have to be a professional to get this because I got that by submitting a video on Instagram for a contest. Yeah. It was just a contest she put out saying, you know, dance to my song and we're going to choose one person to be in the video. And hundreds of thousand people did this. And I was like, you know what? Why not? Like someone has to get it. Why couldn't it be me? Yes. So I made a little video. I put it up. And next thing you know, I'm in a Katy Perry music video. I so, did see you guys on uh, your Instagram feed. I did see you talking to her. And what, what an I, exciting moment for you. So exciting. That was my bi first big artist I'd ever worked with. So it was a big moment for me. And she was so sweet and kind. And she was an amazing person to work with. Yeah, no, very, very cool. And I love that. So um, for those of you who can't see you, because obviously it's a podcast, right? Tell them how you look different from the other dancers out there. Yeah, so the typical or stereotypical look for a dancer is pretty much tall, like 5'5", five, five, super thin, like tan, blonde, beautiful girl. That's like the typical look. And me, if you don't know what I look like, I am 5'2", <laughs> I have red hair, freckles, and I'm a bigger girl. And it's, it's really hard for people to think that, you know, I'm a professional dancer or they're like, oh, you're never going to book anything or you're never going to be successful. You'll never be a good dancer or things like that. And I mean, I'm pretty sure I've, I've proved them wrong at this point, but that's kind of how I don't really fit into the dance world yeah. and how I'm working on breaking those stereotypes and making people realize that dance isn't about the look. It's about the way you make someone feel at the end of the day. Yes. It's so great because um, I do a bit of dancing myself, nothing professional. I just <laughs> go to dance lessons, weekly dance lessons. I've just started doing dance hall, which I love. Oh, and, nice. Yeah. And uh, do you know dance hall? It's like a Jamaican uh -huh. dance, right? And what I yeah. love about that, um, th that particular class is that women from all sizes, backgrounds, ages just come and shake their booty, man. And it's just, mm -hmm. it, it's so great because I'm 42 now, so I might be the second oldest in that class, right? Not that I care because I'm just there for <laughs> fun, right? So yeah. I, I love that. Like moving really like is so expressive, isn't it? It just, like, yeah, I remember you said, um, I was doing some research on you and you said, that you feel true emotion and you show your emotion when you dance. And I think that really comes through for you. Do you still feel that? Oh, definitely. For me, like, I have to feel something or be connected to the song or a story for me to even want to dance. Like, I, I can't just do steps. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. And, like, I have to feel some sort of emotion, even if it's just a basic emotion, even if it's just happy. If it's just happy, then I have to find some way or find something in my head that makes me genuinely happy. Because when someone watches you perform and it's not coming from like a sincere place, you can tell. Yeah. It's very obvious that you can tell it's just like fake emotion. So to be a really great entertainer, you have to find the emotion and somehow find a way to relate to it. No matter what emotion you're feeling in your real life, or at that moment, you have to find something that makes you happy or sad or excited or whatever the emotion is. Amazing. So tell me, so you body proud, you like, this is who I am, I'm going to rock the moves out. And yet people in the industry and everywhere pretty much are telling you, hey, girlfriend, if you need to make it, you need to lose weight. So how did you sort of go, you know what, that's not my truth 
my truth is I am who I am, I'm rocking this out. How did you keep that motivation going for yourself? I think how I motivated myself to keep going no matter what people said is that my passion for dance is so big and it's such an important part of my life that I I can't even think about quitting dance like that that's never been a thought in my head like when people tell me oh you're never gonna make it I just think okay well I'm gonna find a way to make it I need to find a way to to do it because this is all I want to do and it's all I care about not all I care about I love my friends and family too it's my biggest passion in life so it, it's never been an option for me to quit because I think if you're really passionate and you truly love something a thousand percent, you will never quit. No matter how many people will tell you you can't do it or how many times people tear you down or you get told you're not good enough. There's just something in your mind saying, no, this is what I love to do and I'm going to keep doing it no matter what people say. And so I think it's just purely my love of dance that keeps me going. That's so incredible because, um, this year for the Red Hot Truth, I've launched something called the Blossom Campaign. And so what it is, it's to encourage women in particular to come out of hiding, to go all in on their dreams, to live their truth and to blossom, right? And you're blossoming. Yeah. And yet so many women, I feel, are hiding. And I wonder what you would say to those women who gave up, you know, who were 19 at one stage who had the passion and had a dream that almost just had that beaten out of them, if I can say that, how would you, yeah. what would you say to those women? Um, I would just say that I know it's really scared putting yourself out there. I do because I'm in that situation on a daily basis. Um, but I would just say that if, if you don't put yourself out there and take risks, you're never going to get a reward or you're never going to get what you want out of it. So it's kind of like you have to, what is uh, the phrase I'm trying to think of? Like in order for like a rainbow to happen, there has to be a storm, right? So if, if you want to get to that rainbow or to that amazing place and whatever you want to achieve, you kind of have to go through the struggle first. And I think a big part of that struggle is just accepting yourself and putting yourself out there for other people to judge you pretty much. But I can tell you that the reward once you do that is so much bigger than anything else. Like, obviously I've had a lot of trouble with people like telling me in public in front of people I respect and I look up to saying in front of everyone like, Oh, you're too fat or you need to lose 20 pounds or whatever they say. And that obviously had a big effect on me and my, confidence but I had to keep going because I knew in the back of my head that one day I would get to where I am today just doing what I love and getting to work with amazing artists and travel the world and inspire people so I would just say that like I said no risk no reward and you have to go through the struggle to get to the achievement and it's never too late no matter what age you are <laughs> you can always do whatever you want to do I love that a 19-year-old is saying that. That's so awesome. Um, tell me about your support system because your mum sitting mm -hmm. next to you very quietly <laughs> and I often yeah. see her. I know she's awesome. And I often see her, you know, in your videos, like she's up by your side. So tell me how important it is to have your mum there. And I know your dad passed away. I read that your mm -hmm. dad passed in 2015. Um, and mentors and coaches so tell me about the support system you have um yeah a support system is a crucial thing that you need to have especially if you come out to LA to try to make it just because this industry can be so incredibly like hurtful to your soul yeah <laughs> <laughs> the things they say and the things they do is just it, it some of it is really hard to deal with yourself and it's almost impossible to do it alone. So I'm really happy that my mom obviously is here with me and she's the most supportive person ever. I mean, she does everything for me. Um, and I definitely would not be here if she wasn't here helping me along the way. So I, I truly credit like most of my success for her helping me through it and for her, you know, never like doubting me, never questioning my career 
like never telling me that I should lose weight. She's never said that. She's always cared as, as long as I'm healthy and I'm happy. That's all that matters to her. And it's just been a huge help along the way. So I'm very grateful and I have an awesome support system. So is LA really as bad as they say it is? Because, you know, I've heard things about LA and I think it is rumored to be very, very aggressive. Is it really that bad? Um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. Um, it, the things they say are true. (laughs) It can be very cutthroat and very political, judgmental, like harsh. There are a lot of negatives, but I will say the positives make up for it in every way. Like, even though I've, like I said, I've been told so many times I'm not good enough and all these different choreographers, casting directors have told me, you know, I'm, I'm too fat to book anything. When I do get the jobs, like when I did the Savage Fenty show, that made up for everything I had to go through to get to that point. So, it yes, LA can be pretty bad, um, but at the end of the day, for me, and it might not be for everyone, but for me personally, it's worth it to get to do the things that I've been able to do. So what's it? Cause you know, I'm not, I'm not in the U S so everyone seems to flock to LA. Is that the place where you make it as a performer? Absolutely. Um, especially for dance, if you want to be successful kind of at all, <laughs> you have to either live in LA or New York. Okay. Um, New York is more, um, like concert dancing, like ballet companies, modern, um, there's some hip hop out there, but I would say the like capital for hip hop in the U S is probably LA. So you definitely are not, I'm not going to say you have to, but it's most people that are successful live in LA or New York. Okay. That's interesting. So tell me, you know, um, you want to hit the big time and you're definitely getting there. You're sort of climbing up the, or clawing your way up the ladder or dancing your way up the ladder, whatever it is. Um, is the fame you've got now or the success you've got now everything you thought it would be? Um, I mean, I, it's not everything I thought it would be because I never thought of, like, followers. Like, that's, I don't care about that really. So I, I never, like, when I first moved out here, I wasn't like, oh, my God, what's it going to be like when I get hundreds of thousands of followers? Like, oh, my God. I wasn't worried about that. I was worried about, I want to get this dance job really bad. (laughs) Um, So I didn't really have like, um, I wasn't expecting anything because I wasn't expecting to get popular. Okay. But it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, It's really cool to know that so many people support what I do and are inspired by my message and things like that. Um, And it really helps me to remember why I am in LA and why I do what I do. Um, you know, sometimes obviously we have down days and we have days where we just don't want to do anything and we're hard on ourselves and we're not confident and knowing that I have all those people to support me and that love me really helps me get out of that because it reminds me that, Hey, you're not just doing this for you. You're doing this for a ton of people that don't have the same opportunity and you know, you need to do it for the people that can't. Um, so it's, it's amazing, but it's also not pressure. But you do feel a certain responsibility to just do your best. And obviously, I always try to <laughs> do my best. But it's even yeah. more pressure knowing that, you know, for me, 250,000 people are watching my every move. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little bit of pressure. Of but I, I'm thankful. I just want to talk to you about that. So that's interesting to me. So you started an Instagram account. Are you, were you just putting dance videos on there to get noticed? Was that your intention? Um. Well, I mean, when I first got Instagram, I was in, like, seventh grade, and I was just posting (laughs) stupid stuff, but when I moved to LA, I would post, like, my dance videos that I just took on my phone from class, and mostly the reason I posted them was just for me or for, like, my friends to see what I was doing from Colorado and California. Yeah. Um, Obviously, I had no intention of, like, going viral or or whatever. Um, It was just more for me, Um, but as... I started to get a little bit more of a following. People just fell in love with my dance videos. And it's weird because now it's like my dance videos are my job, if that makes sense. Like so many things I've been able to do have been from my dance videos that people have seen online. So it's really crazy that, you know, it it went from me just posting fun videos of me in a dance class to me, like posting videos and going from me just posting a dance video to being in a Katy Perry music video 
it's really amazing. social media is a crazy thing isn't it amazing right and um and even that you went out and you didn't set the intention to get a following and that you did because you know once again they say it's really because you won in a million you know there's always that oh you know it's so hard getting a following on social media and you just went there and you were yourself and it just picked up from there yeah it's because people can't people try too hard yeah and like no one's gonna follow you to watch you try to be popular like you have to be authentic and genuine and the people that like you will like you for you and that's the following you want you don't want a bunch of followers who don't even know the real you you know what i mean like all the things i post and i talk about are very authentic and that's why people like it is because it's relatable and they get to see what kind of person i am and get to know me better yeah, I agree with you there. And I really feel that, you know, you are being different. Like, yeah, I think everyone wants to be the same. Everyone is photoshopping. Everyone's beautiful, doing these stupid poses. You're like, come on, man. We all know that's a, that's a pose. Get real. Like, and I yeah. think people really want real now. They're like, we're over... Um, we're over the fake, right? We're over, we want yeah. real, we want to be ourselves. And we, the world is really telling us everywhere that we're not good enough. And here's Amanda <laughs> rocking her shit out, being who she is. I think that's awesome. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to also just ask you, because there's a lady here in Australia, her name's Celeste Barker. I'm not sure if you've heard of her. So what she did online mm-hmm. is... Um, she's got 6.5 million followers on Instagram and how she sort of started. Wow. Yeah, amazing, right? So she started taking the Mickey um, out of model shots. So they would have a model would do this ridiculous shot, right? And she is also a normal everyday woman who has two children, right? And has a normal figure. But then she started doing the same poses as them just sort of highlighting how ridiculous it is that the messaging is that we need to look like these models, right? But the one thing she said is because she built a personal brand about around herself and being authentically her, and she's a comedian, she travels a lot, like she works hard, mm-hmm. like you work hard, right? No one sees mm-hmm. that, but behind the scenes you're working. And the minute she might lose a bit of weight because she's working, People are like, what are you doing? You're losing weight. And so there's a real pressure to maintain her look. Do you find that for yourself? Um, yeah, that's interesting because it's like people call me, oh, you should lose weight. You need to be skinnier. But then when she does, it's like, oh, you don't love yourself. Like you're trying to be like everyone else, um, which is definitely not the case. I definitely get that. Um, I mean, even for me recently, I've started going to a trainer and – no, it is not because I want to be skinny. And no, it's not because I want to look like everyone else. It's it's health. And I think it's funny that people comment like, you're so unhealthy, like blah, blah, blah. Like you should exercise more. You're so lazy. And then when I do, they're like, oh, like, so now you're not, you don't like body positivity. Like now you're not body positive. I'm like, body positive doesn't mean like, yeah. body positivity isn't a size. Yes. Body positivity is self love no matter the size so like, it doesn't matter if i'm a size zero i can still be body positive totally so it, it, it's a very interesting and i definitely get what she's going through so yeah yeah because that's that's i'm really interested in that because i think you know building a personal brand around yourself is quite there is a danger in that so even though you're doing a positive thing by saying yeah i'm proud of who i am but then every move you make is judged equally right so you know because yeah. dancing is a physical experience like it's a physical sport you and you want to be the best shape you're in right and and so going to a trainer is just helping you be professional and be the best self right so it's yeah. interesting i suppose it comes back then really to you have to really know what you're doing it for and you're doing it for you and to achieve your dream. And at the end of the day, even though you are, you are an inspiration to others, you are the most important thing is you and your dream. And at the end of the day, if you close that social media account, it means nothing because you are still you, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. I think that's really important. 
So um, just the last few questions, because I'm really interested, um, especially in your perspective as a younger woman, um, is what's your idea of feminine leadership? Um, did you say feminine leadership? Yeah, feminine leadership, yeah. Um, I, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think it's definitely important that we should get more women in higher up positions. Cause I know like even for dance, like 90% of casting directors and 90, well not 90%, but like 70% of the biggest choreographers are male. Yeah. Um, so even in the, in the dance world, that's still very prevalent. It's not just like politics or things like that. It's kind of all throughout like yes. the entire world and all like work types of work. Um, so I would definitely say that I'd like to see more like women being creative directors or being designers or being the casting director or director or videographer and things like that. Um, cause even though like sometimes I don't notice it, but like now that you're asking me this question, I, I realize that how, how much like men rule yeah. The dance community. Definitely. Um, so I definitely think it's important to get more powerful women in uh, more powerful positions, for sure. And yeah, I mean, you are a, being a leader in the feminine movement too, by owning your, by owning your body, by owning you. I mm -hmm. mean, I think also we always think it has to be a, a high up, a, that people have to be in higher positions, but I firmly know that it's community people being leaders in the community that's where the change happens as well and also maybe making um choices of who you work with it's a tough one isn't it i think you know you know you want to go somewhere and the people who go get you there are now male but then mm -hmm. how do we get how do we start working with women a bit more and going, I want to work with you and I know you're up and coming, but let's work together. Let's come work at coming up together. I think it's always that fine line between ambition and, um, uh, uh, and being a feminine leader. I mean, I totally get that. But are there women like choreographers that are up and coming that you would like to work with? Um, well, I've gotten to work with a lot of choreographers that I look up to very much. I mean, Paris Goble is one of the best choreographers in the world. And she's from New Zealand. Um, <laughs> but she's absolutely one of the best choreographers in the world, I would say. And getting to work with her for the Rihanna Savage Fenty show was an amazing experience. And I definitely think she's changing. She's a very, like feminine um leader for sure and she's changing things up a lot and okay. so i think she's definitely someone that uh should get a lot of credit for the progress the dance industry has made right um she's definitely to thank for that um and yeah there are, i mean there are a ton of choreographers i'd love to work with i mean i'm all about getting to work with everyone if i can like i want as many different experiences getting to work with different people different personalities different teaching uh types i i want to work with honestly as many people as i can because i think everyone has something that you can take away from would you look at doing as part of your vision being a choreographer i i do think uh maybe a few years down the line i'll get more into choreography i choreograph now but i'm not like trying to obviously do it yeah. like really professionally at the moment i'm more focused on working as a dancer yes. um but i do really enjoy choreographing and it's, it's it's weird because it is for me it's so different than being a dancer mm -hmm. like you would think that they're pretty similar like oh yeah like dancers choreographers like they're like pretty similar and it's so different like you have to be so incredibly creative to be a choreographer and so smart and musically talented like it takes a lot to be a really good choreographer but I definitely want to work more on that in the future yeah yeah and of course you know you're just working on your dance career now so it'd be interesting to see and I I with you there sometimes I look at a dance piece and I'm thinking how did someone put that together like that is mm -hmm. so incredible there's so many aspects to that like how do they actually come into someone's mind it's phenomenal right 
And yeah, yeah. choreographers are very underappreciated and they're very talented. Yeah, no, I, I hear you there. Um, so, how do you keep yourself grounded? Do you have a spiritual practice or do you, how do you keep yourself grounded uh, in, in this world? I don't really do anything spiritual. Um, I have a journal that I write in sometimes. Like if I get, uh, if I go on an audition or I get a really good job, like I'll write in it how I was feeling or, or even if I don't do anything, like if I'm just feeling some type of way, I, I journal about it. Um, and I have that and I've been doing that for about a year and a half now, which has been really, um, fun for me. But I think the thing that keeps me most grounded is my mom. Like she's always said, (laughs) if I ever get like a big head, she's going to take me right back to Colorado (laughs) and she just will not put up with a brat pretty much. And so I've, I've never been someone who brags or who gets cocky or gets comfortable and like thinks they'll get every job because you never know. There are hundreds of more dancers coming out every year to L.A. to take your job. Like, you can never get comfortable because L.A. is constantly changing and there's always something you can work on and improve. My mother was always the same, you know. My mother, I think mothers just have that ability to just bring you right back down, you know. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they like, no, no, come back down to, to the earthly plane. It's their, their talent. <laughs> Look, I just really wanted to um, really acknowledge you. I, I, um, I just think what you're doing is phenomenal. And I, first of all, what I love, I want to acknowledge you for following your dream. I think just going. Oh, this thank way. you. And I also love that at such a young age, you're not going. Um, you know, because it's a really nice age to be very self-centered and to. You know, just Mm -hmm. it's the me age, I think. But you have just also gone, this is not just about me. I want to be an inspiration. And that's a big responsibility. And I really want to acknowledge you for doing that. Thank you. So how can we support you? Like, as a community, would it be best to follow you and to share your stuff? How can we, as the Red Hot Truth community, support you? I mean, I don't (laughs) – I think it's funny because I'm I'm not going to stand here and be like, yeah, guys, make sure to follow me. Um, but for me, support is just, it, it, what would benefit me the most is seeing other people like accept themselves and put themselves out there. So if, if you're listening to this, um, then do something that you've been scared to do or do something that you've been wanting to do, but have been too afraid of what people will say, like put yourself out there and see the reward that comes with that. And I hope that they'll be more accepting of themselves and more confident in themselves so all I can ask is that more people just 100% love themselves and accept who they are I love that yeah I do love that and definitely use the hashtag breaking stereotypes because I think that's a really nice hashtag to use right um Mm -hmm. so my last and favorite question is what is your red hot truth and how are you living it Um, my red heart truth is I think I was put on this earth to inspire people from all over the world to do what they love and to be authentically themselves. And I I think I'm doing that. So I'm very proud of myself. And I definitely think my purpose in life is to inspire. That is beautiful. Hey, can I ask you a mama question with mom be keen? (laughs) <laughs> sure yeah can you turn the phone to mum so i can see her oh no i oh, know don't worry i won't hi. i won't post it up hi what's your name <laughs> i'm jill hi jill i'm petra hi uh to meet jill, you. um tell me what does it feel like to see amanda thriving like like she's thriving now i tell her probably every other day Did you ever think when we moved to L.A. this would happen or that would happen or you'd be here or you'd be doing this? It's just amazing to me everything she's been able to do. Yeah, it's so interesting and and, um, because obviously she's had a very sound and loving upbringing to be able to do something like that, like she's doing now. Do you see that? Do you see, like, um, you know... 
because she grew up in such a loving household that she's able to do that. Do you acknowledge that? It was a crazy household. I tried to encourage all my children to go after their passion and their dreams, but she has six older brothers and sisters. Yeah. <laughs> so our household was crazy. I, you know, it was as loving as I could make it, but it was crazy. Oh, uh, was it? Was it mental? That was probably a good experience for you, Amanda, growing up in a <laughs> mental, crazy place. Because you're like, oh, yeah. You had to Always fight something for attention. Hey? Eh? Well, did you she have was the baby. She was the baby. That's a good place to be. Well, you know, I, I also want to acknowledge you, right? Because, I mean, having so many other children and then being out there and, you know, working with Amanda to help her achieve a dream is pretty awesome. So, you know, congratulations to you too. Thank you. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much, both of you. For this wonderful interview. Amanda, I pray that the audio worked. So I'll let you know because it was such okay. a beautiful interview. But thank you so much and good luck with finding your apartments. Where are your brothers and sisters? Where are the rest of your siblings? Um, most of them are, I mean, they're, they're all older than me. So most of them are living kind of their own lives. But a lot of them are in Colorado where I'm from. Uh, also, what's the what's the age difference between your 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 immediate uh, siblings? The oldest is thirty one, and then I'm nineteen. Okay, wow. So there is quite a gap there, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, my gorgeous lady. Keep doing what you're doing, and I'm so thank excited you to so see much. where you go. Wow. Ciao from thank you. Sunny Bye. Sydney. Bye, babe. That's a wrap, sisters. Remember to love us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you have not already signed up to the Red Hot Truth or the RedHotTruth.com for tips for coaches specifically, share this interview, share the love, share the support, and remember to live your Red Hot Truth and to blossom.